around for millions of years and can be found many places around the world, but is untraceable for 98% of its life. Stick around and you'll find out. Here's a riddle. What animal is so secretive and mysterious that even scientists don't know much about it? It's a tough one. I'll give you some hints. See if you can figure it out. It's a prehistoric animal that's been around for more than 150 million years. It can be found in many places around the world, but most people never get to see one. That's because it spends virtually all of its life in the sea, and that's one of the reasons why scientists don't know that much about it, because for 98% of its life, this animal disappears into the ocean where we can't see what it's doing. And even though it lives in the sea, this animal breathes air and can be on land when it wants to, but that rarely happens. Many years ago, this reptile numbered in the millions, but today they're in trouble and they face a very uncertain future. Have you figured it out yet? Yep, we're talking about sea turtles, one of only four types of reptiles that live in salt water. So why are sea turtles in danger and what's being done to prevent their extinction? Stick around and we'll all find out. you don't know much about sea turtles, do you? Well, you're not the only one. Like we said, even scientists don't know a whole lot about them. That's because as soon as sea turtles hatch on the beach, they rush to the water and disappear. Under normal circumstances, no one will see them again till many years later. And then it's only the females that return to the beach to nest. So most of what scientists know about sea turtles comes from caring for turtles that have been rescued and from studying them during the times when they're on land. But with so few opportunities to learn about them, our information about sea turtles still has some pretty big gaps that scientists are trying to fill. So what do we know about sea turtles and what are scientists still trying to figure out? To find out more, I went to the experts. I love a good mystery, don't you? The first expert I talked to was Jim Kinsler, aquarium supervisor at SeaWorld Orlando, who took me to see the turtles in their habitat. When I asked what he could tell me about sea turtles, he started with their history. Jim told me that sea turtles are reptiles of the order Testudines, which includes all tortoises and turtles, both land and sea. It seems sea turtles have been around for a really long time, and some of the ancient ones were pretty big. The fossil record dates back to 208 to 144 million years ago. And if you think about that, that actually predates the dinosaurs, which is pretty interesting. In fact, there's, there's one particular sea turtle in the fossil record called uh, Archelon, and he was the largest sea turtle of his time. He was, in fact, up to 13 feet in length, and could be upwards of two tons. So how many species of sea turtles are left today? Well, that's something that's under debate. Scientists currently recognize seven species of sea turtle and one subspecies. They are the loggerhead, the green, the Kemp's Ridley, the olive Ridley, the hawksbill, the flatback, and the largest of them all, the leatherback. Then there's the black sea turtle, which scientists currently classify as a subspecies of the Pacific green sea turtle. All sea turtles have some characteristics in common. One is a trait shared by all reptiles, being cold-blooded. They are cold-blooded, and because of that, that means that their, their bodies are the same temperature as their surrounding environment. All sea turtles have a protective shell or covering. The top part of the shell is called the carapace, and in all species except the leatherback, the carapace is covered with a layer of horny plates called scutes. The leatherback is different. It's covered with a thick, oil-infused skin, and its carapace is mostly cartilage that raises in long ridges down its back. But I was wondering, do sea turtles have special adaptations for living their entire lives in the water? In particular, they have very large, strong front flippers that they're able to move themselves through the water quite, uh, quite effectively. If you look at them from the side, they have a low profile, so there's no resistance moving through the water. They're able to slide right through. Most people think that, that the sea turtles can retract their, their uh, flippers in their head much like a freshwater turtle can. In fact, that's not true. If they were able to retract, that would create areas on their body that would slow them down. I've never seen a sea turtle in the wild. Where do they live? 
Actually, sea turtles live in oceans all over the world. There are some species of sea turtles that tend to stay closer to the tropical zones around the equator, but in fact there are other species such as the loggerhead, even the leatherback, that will venture out into the cooler waters as well. I never realized how big sea turtles can be. Are they all the same size? The smallest is the olive ridley, maybe two feet in length and then just under 100 pounds. Leatherbacks can get up to eight feet in length and weigh upwards of 1,200 pounds. In fact, there have been sightings of leatherbacks as large as 10 feet and weighing almost a ton. The size of a leatherback would probably be comparable to a small car. A sea turtle's diet varies by species and depends a lot on their jaw structure. Some sea turtles have jaws that can crush and grind, but others have more delicate mouths, designed for just swallowing soft-bodied animals. Can you imagine one chicken laying all these eggs at once? Well, that's what a female sea turtle does when she comes on shore to nest. Like most reptiles, sea turtles reproduce by laying eggs, with the females returning to the same beach to nest almost every time. The female will come out, typically at nighttime, they will dig a pit, an egg chamber with their back flippers, they'll drop the eggs, cover the nest up with sand, and then return back to the ocean. Females lay between 50 to 200 ping pong ball size eggs per nest, and will nest several times during a season. It takes 45 to 70 days for the eggs to hatch, and once they do, the hatchlings make a mad dash for the sea. This is a very critical time for these animals. Once they break out of the nest, they're exposed and they're quite vulnerable. And there's a number of predators such as uh, seabirds, such as raccoons, crabs, uh, any terrestrial animal that you typically might find on a beach, especially at nighttime. And even once they're in the ocean, because of their very small size, we have predators out there as well. There's large fish, sharks, animals like that. Out of say a hundred eggs laid, you may get only a handful, two to three, maybe at the most five hatchlings make it. Once the hatchlings make it out into the water, scientists really don't know what happens to them after that. We don't have a lot of information from that point till sub-adult or adulthood, so there's still a lot of mystery, a lot of things to be solved out there. So, if we don't know how turtles grow up, how do we tell how old a turtle is? And how old do they get anyway? Well, there's not a foolproof way to determine how old a sea turtle is. It's still something that's under study. We don't know a whole lot about it, but uh, the estimates are up around 50 years, even going so far as 80 years. One thing we do know is that all sea turtles are in danger of extinction. The big question is, why? Like other endangered species, sea turtles are the victims of too many threats to their survival at once. There are natural stresses, such as the low survival rate of hatchlings and natural illness. Add that to the increasing human stresses, such as beach development and injuries caused by human-made devices, and the future could be pretty grim for sea turtles. Wow, sea turtles have been around for more than 150 million years. But now, it's possible that they'll disappear from the face of the Earth forever, unless they get some help to survive. Thankfully, there are government agencies, conservation organizations, and companies like SeaWorld that are working together to save sea turtles. Many times, it's nursing a sick or injured turtle back to health and returning it to the sea. But it's always about learning more so we can do the right things to save the species. So, what does it take to reach that goal? A lot of teamwork, a lot of dedication, but mostly a lot of perseverance to not give up. Check it out. For Aquarius Ginny Albert, it was an exciting moment. A leatherback turtle was stranded and SeaWorld got the call. When we got the call that there was a leatherback, um, you know, that was on the beach, we were ecstatic at the opportunity to get to see one of these animals. And we were just hoping that the injury wasn't severe, you know, for it. The rescue team raced to the site, and when they arrived, they found the leatherback in surprisingly good condition. SeaWorld Orlando's Director of Veterinary Services, Dr. Mike Walsh, helped to make an immediate on-site assessment. As far as the visual examination, we could not find any wounds or lesions that say, I get 
I think she's been hit by a boat. I think she's been entangled. It was looking for a nesting site, was a little bit lost. We took a chance in terms of taking the blood work, doing a physical, and saying, this animal would probably do better taking his chances out here. One more. Sometimes, if they're lucky, a rescue doesn't require rehabilitation. So after Dr. Walsh gave the okay on the leatherback's help, the next step was to get the turtle back out to the deep ocean water where it belonged. The Coast Guard actually offered to take us out on one of their cutter ships. Uh, we hopped on with the leatherback in the back of the boat. The cutter took the rescue team and the turtle about 26 miles offshore to the open ocean where leatherbacks are normally found. They're a pelagic species, so it means they live in the open ocean and they predominantly eat jellyfish. So that's really where they find all of their food. The team estimated that the leatherback probably weighed close to 700 pounds, so it took some real muscle to get this turtle over the side of the boat. Working together, they finally lifted her up and she slid off into the water. It was the best feeling you could ever imagine. And it was actually a rescue and release all in about of an hour or two. Sometimes sea turtles get into trouble in the most unlikely spots. That was the case of Beaky, a Kemp's Ridley turtle that was found in Wales, 5,000 miles from home, stranded and tangled in seaweed. Beaky was taken to the Wales Sea Life Oceanarium where aquarist Gary Cross contacted SeaWorld to take the turtle for rehab. A couple were walking on the beach and they saw a bundle of seaweed and inside that seaweed was Beaky. They didn't know what it was or what breed of turtle it was and we had to get advice to identify it and it ended up to be one of the rarest turtles in the world. No one knows how Beaky got to Wales, but soon he was on a British Airways jet bound for Florida and much needed critical care. Beaky arrived severely dehydrated and underweight. In Beaky's case, he was recovered at a time when the cold over there was an issue. The treatment for Beaky was the same as a cold stun animal. With warm water therapy and lots of good food, the chances were good that he'd make a full recovery. SeaWorld receives an average of 50 rescued sea turtles every year, and many times the turtles are brought directly to SeaWorld by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission or by trained volunteers from a number of conservation groups. It's usually a beachgoer that'll find the turtle on, on the beach and they'll notify either a park ranger or a lifeguard, something like that, and they'll call the state. Well, this morning we got a call about 9 o'clock about a beached sub-adult loggerhead that was extremely lethargic and wasn't really taking a whole lot of respirations. So he just arrived and as you can see he's, he's pretty depressed. The first job when a turtle arrives is to assess its condition and try to figure out what's wrong. Sometimes an injury is obvious, but a lot of times it's a mystery that has to be solved with blood tests, x-rays, intuition, and experience. As you can see, rescuing sea turtles is a real cooperative effort that often includes ordinary people like you and me. That's what it takes to save any endangered species. Ordinary people who care and are willing to do what it takes. The goal of SeaWorld's sea turtle program is to rehab these guys and send them back to the wild. So, how do you treat an animal that you know so little about? By intuition, trying new things, and learning from every situation. As soon as a turtle gets to SeaWorld, the vets and aquarists go to work. They clean the shell, take blood, do x-rays and sonograms, and visually examine the turtle from top to bottom, all trying to figure out what's wrong. The first 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours, are really the, the crunch time when this turtle comes in. This turtle's problem turned out to be that he was impacted. That's vet language for constipated, and it was killing him. His intestines were packed with shells, and his body was shutting down. It was a good thing someone found him when they did. The variety of injuries we get at SeaWorld is amazingly varied at times. We see natural disease as part of their problems, and this may be infections, viruses, bacteria, um, we see a lot of boat hits. We also see blunt trauma. The other injuries we deal with are things like entanglement. We see hook problems, we see monofilament line. Really sick turtles like this one are kept out of the water for the first day or so. They get a glucose IV to give them an energy boost, antibiotics to start fighting infection, and a coating of petroleum jelly on their skin to keep it moist. A warm bed and blankets helps to keep their body temperature up. Sea turtles 
are air breathers, just like us, so they can actually stay out of the water for an indefinite amount of time. When they're so depressed and lethargic, it's, it's absolutely necessary to keep them out of the water. Um, they're just not strong enough to lift their head on their own to breathe. Turtle rehabilitation is definitely not an easy job. Aquarius Jenny Albert and Melissa Ranley work with all the turtles that are brought in. From the constipation cases to the ones with hooks in their stomachs and everything in between. He looks like he's doing pretty good. He looks like he's got some energy today. <laughs> he's ready to go. Holy cow. Let's flip him. Okay. Well, we end up doing numerous treatments, sometimes things that we had never seen before. This little green turtle had a fishing hook in his stomach that required surgery to get it out. The surgical technique is kind of new. It's only the third time the vets here have done it. But it works and gets the sea turtles on the road to recovery. A lot of what we do is we've got to find innovations. Those innovations are based on the limitations we're presented with, but the challenges aren't limited. So we have to change the approach to meet the challenges. Of the 15 facilities in Florida that can care for rescued sea turtles, SeaWorld is one of the places that can care for the ones that are hurt the worst. SeaWorld has been instrumental in the care of sea turtles, especially because they have the state-of-the-art facility which is able to treat some of the uh, worst case scenarios of turtles, the, the turtles that are uh, very badly injured through uh, boat injuries and things like that. They use all the latest treatments and techniques to, to care for these turtles and they kind of act as a model for other research facilities and rehab facilities to follow because of their ingenious and innovative ways. Feeding all of these turtles is a job in itself. Besides the different species liking different foods, each turtle is at a different stage of recuperation and gets fed based on that. And there's no guidebook for any of it. That a girl. Rehabbing sea turtles is a tough job. Just figuring out what to do in each case makes it a real challenge because we don't have lots of years of experience and knowledge to go on. But with innovative thinking and dedicated people, more rescued sea turtles are getting a second chance at survival. SeaWorld has rescued more than 660 sea turtles and has released over 365, and they learn new things every step of the way. After rehab, it's time to send some of these guys home. So, how do you know when a sea turtle is ready to be released? It seems to be easier to know when to send a turtle home than it is to know how to make it well. Once they're ready, it's pretty simple to tell. The basic requirements for release for us from the medical side are that we've taken care of whatever medical issue is there. So normal blood work, no problems on x-rays, capability of swimming, they'll go. Uh, once the veterinarians think that the animal is ready for release, we'll contact the uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, which oversees all the rehab of the sea turtles in, in Florida. This is one of the two green sea turtles we're going to release today. We'll get his measurements and weight and then we'll get him ready to go. Getting measurements and weights on all the turtles throughout their rehab and before release is important to add to our information about them. It helps us learn how much turtles grow over a specific period of time and that will ultimately help us to figure out how to determine their age. And this is the second green sea turtle we're going to release today. If the turtle is large enough, it will get identification tags before it's released. And this procedure is similar to having your ears pierced. It's just going through a very um, soft cartilage type material. Each small metal tag has a number that corresponds to an information file on that specific turtle. Its size, rehab information, and release date and location. This information will go to a national database. Uh, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission can monitor all this information uh, to keep track of any animals that have been released. Tagging done, this turtle is ready to hit the road for release. Sea turtles are usually released when the water is warm and not that much different from the temperature of the water they've been in during rehab. The location is important too. We want to try to release the animal as close to where it came from as possible. Sea turtles do migrate, so we, we're not too sure where the animals are along in their migration, and we want to make sure that we release them to, a, to an area that's suitable for them. 
It's finally time and the turtle sure looks ready. Just a few steps out to where the water is a foot or so deep and seven months of rehab will come to an end with the kick of a flipper. It's a wonderful feeling to see these animals being released, especially with an injury where you know this animal, if he hadn't been brought in for rehabilitation, would have never survived. It's definitely the most rewarding part of our job. From little green sea turtles to huge loggerheads, the ultimate success is getting them back to the wild. But what about those turtles that can't be released? Well, some of the animals that we receive obviously have injuries that are so severe that they might not be able to survive out in the wild. We have a wonderful exhibit that helps with our education program and helps people to see the types of injuries that these animals do sustain. And so they're our ambassadors to the public. Their contribution may even be more important in the long run than someone who goes out and reproduces. This guy is going to educate somebody who will impact somebody else and impact somebody else. Remember Beaky, the turtle rescued in Wales? Well, after four months of rehab, he was released healthy back into the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, where Kim's Ridley turtles are usually found. Every sea turtle we save is a success, but for the ones that make it, there are some that don't. Sometimes a turtle's injuries are too severe, but sometimes it's probably because we just don't know enough to save them. But there's good news, too. Lots of people are doing research on sea turtles, and some of it's pretty amazing stuff. Sea turtles are probably the biggest mystery animal around because we don't know so much about them. The biggest thing we could learn, the most important part of what uh, would make a sea turtle survive best, is to learn their, where they go, their migration patterns. And sea turtle migration is exactly what Dr. Scott Eckert of the Hub Sea World Research Institute studies. He's using satellite telemetry to solve the mystery. Because turtles spend so much time in the oceans, We've had to develop very specialized techniques for studying them. Working with SeaWorld, Dr. Ecker attaches satellite transmitters to rehabilitated sea turtles ready for release and tracks them as they leave the California coast. He's tracked lots of turtles over his years of study, but three very special turtles have brought him some great new information. The tracking of Bubba, Mahaley, and Crackers has been extremely successful and extremely exciting. Bubba, Mahaley, and Crackers are loggerheads that were released with transmitters in October 2000, with students from Pacific Middle School helping with the project. Nobody's ever satellite tracked small juvenile turtles from, their, when they, from the time they live in the open sea to when they live in coastal waters. The cool thing was that the turtle's progress was posted on the internet. The signal was transmitted from the turtle's back up to a satellite in space then back to a recording station that sent it to Dr. Eckert's email. Mahaley took almost two years to get to Japan, where she accidentally got caught, but that gave researchers a chance to change out transmitter batteries and continue her tracking, hopefully all the way to her first nesting. There are two aspects to our study that I think are important. The scientific aspect is that we learn more about the biology of this amazing reptile. The other aspect that's equally important is that we can expose the world to the exciting things that we're learning. Dr. Eckert learned something else from the turtles in his study. Most interesting about that is that they all take the same route. These turtles know exactly where to go to get back to Japan. And that route seems to be along a very narrow uh, water temperature corridor. Loggerheads like the water about 68 to 70 degrees in temperature, about room temperature, what we all like. Dr. Ecker is sure the information he gathers from all his studies will help us know how to protect all sea turtles in the open ocean and give these marine reptiles a safe path for their long migrations. Research on sea turtles is ongoing, from rehabilitation techniques and medical treatments to tracking these huge reptiles across giant seas. Scientists are looking for answers to the remaining mysteries about this prehistoric species. It's exciting to know that scientists and researchers are on the sea turtle side too, and that they're working hard to get the information we need to help the sea turtles survive. Even though there are things we still don't know, you can see we're learning all the time. And the more we know, the more we can do. Maybe we can save them. This is 
is a turtle excluder device, or TED for short. It's a special sea turtle escape door that's now a part of shrimp fishing nets, and it's one of the things helping save sea turtles. Unfortunately, many of the threats to sea turtles come from humans. Beach development threatens nesting sites, and artificial lighting confuses hatchlings that use the moon as a guide to the sea. Discarded fishing and crab trap lines entangle them in their homes, and ocean pollution harms them in all kinds of ways. So, what can we do to help save sea turtles? Well, one of the best things people can do to help the sea turtle population is to just watch where they put their trash. That's because trash in the ocean can be deadly, especially when it becomes lunch, like when sea turtles swallow plastic bags thinking they're jellyfish. If it's out there, they will eat it. Um, we find very strange things inside sea turtles' bellies when they come in. Boating and fishing can still be fun, but always consider the impacts to wildlife. If you're fishing with some friends and family, you know, pull up your line, pull up your hook, don't cut them off. Um, you know, observe those speeds out there. They're set for your safety as well as the other animals that are out there's safety. We can all learn more about sea turtles by visiting marine life parks and aquariums and from educational websites and conservation organizations, and then teach other people too. Uh, the best thing people can do to help save sea turtles is, is still to learn about them to study, to think, to try, to try to imagine what life would be like for a turtle and what things it would need to survive. Sea turtles need clean oceans to live in and wide clean beaches where they can nest safely. Their nests need to be protected and things that confuse females or new hatchlings like beach lighting should be minimized. If the nesting area is destroyed through lighting or development, putting up seawalls on the beach, they're not going to have good habitat to lay their eggs in the future. Supporting nesting beach protection campaigns and getting involved in beach and waterway cleanups to remove trash is a great way to become aware of how we use our beaches and how it impacts wildlife. It's really boiling back to, as with any species, sharing the environment. Be sure to support all the organizations that rescue and rehabilitate sea turtles and work for legislation to protect the turtles and their habitats. And, just in case, we should all know what to do if we see a stranded turtle. Best thing to do is stay with that turtle if they can and call the wildlife alert. Anytime you see wildlife that you think needs help, you can always call your local Fish and Wildlife Office or even your local authorities and they'll know who to call to get help on its way. As we study turtles, as we begin to understand them better and better, we also understand the key to, to saving the turtles is protecting the environments they live in and understanding how they fit into those environments so that we can protect the various pieces of those environments that are important to them. Saving an endangered species is a lot of work, but we can do it. It's up to all of us to save sea turtles and all other wildlife too. It's not that hard. You can start in your own backyard. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Don't let your trash become a fatal problem for a curious animal. It would be a real shame to lose sea turtles forever, so we all need to do our part to protect these amazing reptiles. They were here millions of years before we were, and they have the right to be around for millions more. Let's give our wildlife a fighting chance to survive. It's worth it, because when wildlife wins, we all win. I'm Jenny Bush. I hope you enjoyed learning about sea turtles and all the dedicated people that are working for their survival. As you've just seen, saving an endangered species is no small task. It all starts by learning more about each animal so we can do the right things to protect them. That's why scientists from Hub SeaWorld Research Institute are working around the world to learn more about sea turtles and many other species, such as the endangered Florida manatee and the northern elephant seal. The knowledge we gain through research and its application in real life situations give us the tools we need to really make a difference in our rescue and rehabilitation programs, as well as in conservation work in the field. It takes all of us working together to save endangered species. And to find out more about how you can support this exciting work, visit Hub SeaWorld Research Institute online. On behalf of SeaWorld, Bush Gardens, and Discovery Cove, I encourage each of you to learn more about wildlife and the environment and what you can do to help because working together we can make a difference.